You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Give us a king. We want to be like other nations. That's what the elders of Israel declared to the prophet Samuel, much to Samuel's dismay. But why in the world would they have wanted to be like other nations? After all, they were God's chosen people. God was their king. But not in the way they wanted when they saw what other nations were doing. And the chief thing those other nations were doing was attacking them. Think the Philistines. Because the Philistines wanted the iron ore deposits that Israel had. Give us a king the elders of Israel said. They wanted a more rapid way of responding to attack than what they had, because what they had was something like a confederacy with troops raised as needed from each of the 12 tribes when danger arose. This was not the most efficient means of defense, unlike a centralized monarchy with a standing army. Why wouldn't the Israelites want to defend themselves better? But this wasn't just a military matter. It was fundamentally a theological one. God tells Samuel quite clearly that the people have not rejected Samuel. They have rejected God. God goes on to point out that unfortunately this is nothing new. The Israelites have a track record of turning away from God and going after false gods when the going gets tough. Recall the Hebrews making a golden calf at the very foot of the holy mountain Sinai not long after God had led them out of bondage from Egypt. Recall the Hebrews grumbling about not having water to drink and food to eat while traversing the wilderness. Yet God, in God's creative ways, met the needs of this people, the people despite their apostasy and their grumbling. Now, it's true that with Samuel, Israel faced a turning point. The old way of the judges was passing. We heard this in the background of last week's lesson. And something new was coming into being. Even Samuel can't continue in the old way of Israel. The days are passing of being directed by judges or priests at the shrine at Shiloh or even by an outstanding prophet like Samuel himself. It turns out that Samuel's sons were no better than his predecessor Eli's. In the verse immediately before the one where our lesson begins today, we hear that Samuel's sons turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. So part of our bigger picture is how justice is to be established. But the people of Israel, instead of looking to God to supply the way, Look at the model of other peoples, and they say to Samuel, Give us a king. As we hear in the first five books of the Bible, God is used to dealing with a recalcitrant people. And just because the Israelites resist God's ways doesn't mean God's creative possibilities cease. It does mean that God sends people, prophets, to warn about the pitfalls of preferring our ways to God's. In today's lesson, Samuel fulfills this role. He tells the people what they are letting themselves in for if they get a king. A standing army by draft. The command of people's food and supplies for military support. The taking of land and harvest to support a royal court the taking of daughters to serve in the royal court, often in menial labor, 10% taxation of everyone from the richest to the poorest, and ultimately Samuel warns, you shall be the king's slaves. This is not a pretty picture. And despite Samuel's warning, the people still call for a king. Give us a king. The easier way out of their troubles is to model themselves after the other nations. 
They had empirical proof that a monarchy worked, at least in the short run. God goes on to grant Israel a monarchy, but not without the pitfalls. We hear many chapters later in 2 Kings, at the end of 2 Kings, that it's in large part due to the corruptions of the monarchy and its chosen deafness to God, especially in the call for justice, that Israel suffers complete defeat at the hands of the Babylonians, that Jerusalem is sacked, the temple is turned into rubble, and exile follows, with even the king being among those taken into exile. But what was Israel to do in the face of the Philistine attacks and hostility by other peoples? Don't we have some sympathy for the condition that the Israelites faced? Initially, yes. Monarchy might have seemed like the only solution against such powers and the religious and judicial corruption that was besetting Israel. Nevertheless, Israel could have remained in steadfast relation to God and sought with God's guidance other more creative ways to seek justice and to protect themselves. They could have at least deliberated the pitfalls that Samuel presented, but they didn't. They insisted on a king. There are too many today around the world and here at home who prefer what we could call the way of nations over seeking God's creative ways to promote justice and ensure security. We see this in the proliferation of wars, whether civil upheaval like what is happening Sudan in Sudan, or in wars between hostile peoples like people in Gaza and Israel. At the heart of so many of these conflicts and the polarization in our own country is the refusal of hostile parties to see and respect the dignity of each other, of every human being, as our baptismal covenant says. Fear drives much of this hostility, and such fear is not entirely misplaced. In warring situation, one group threatens to wipe out the other. It can be that one group does not believe the other has a right to exist, or it can be because of a desire to grab natural resources, or both. In most instances, God is left out of the picture, are only included to conveniently back hostile actions. But what if God were included in our deliberations? What if we, if the world, opened itself to God's creative ways to see that justice prevails? What if confrontation gave way to collaboration? What if fear and greed gave way to the acceptance of each person's full worth? That would be radical. That would be love. What if instead of competing on the basis of scarcity, we cooperated for all to have a just share so that even the most menial of laborers had the means to live respectably? I believe we not only see an end to wars, but also an end to the other ways that people denigrate each other, whether through such attitudes as racism, sexism, homophobia, to name a few. When we are open to create God's creative ways, we do not need kings or autocrats. We are to keep listening, hearing, and pressing for the ways that lead to justice. This can come in individual actions. It can come in challenges to systems that further marginalize the marginalized. It can come in such local actions as supporting impact, Pacham, or joining our effort with Habitat for Humanity. We must also work to stop those forces that make for autocracies, whether in the form of absolute monarchies, dictatorships, or dictator wannabes. Those are systems that reject dissent to the point of violence and breed fear in each other rather than faith. We must secure the right and opportunity to vote and to have real choice in voting. And this is just as true for other lands as it is for us. Am I mixing religion and politics? You could say so. But to be responsible to God, we cannot not be political. Yet in doing so, we must be theologically minded. God does not call us to be blind to the ways that, structure, to the ways that structures hinder or promote well-being, even if they are political. 
Just as God called Israel of old to listen and act, God calls us. Will we seek to be like the other nations, as it were, and reject God? I hope not. I hope that instead we'll have the courage to hear and follow God's creative ways of bringing justice, freedom, and peace to a hurting world in all of its great diversity. I hope that we'll have the faith to trust God and to respect the dignity of every human being and to instill this respect where it's lacking. I hope that we'll have the faith to challenge those people and systems that burden people, that prevent ways to find ways to prevent social and economic subordination, ways to keep us all from becoming slaves. I pray that we'll have the faith not to seek a king, but to seek God and to find ways to fulfill God's will for all to flourish. Amen.